here in Texas. Don't you know? A sea world here in Texas. In San Antonio, it's the biggest and the best. Hands down above the rest, there's a sea world here in Texas. Don't you know? It's the biggest and the best in the world, and it's right in the heart of the Lone Star State. SeaWorld of Texas in San Antonio is 250 acres of the finest in family entertainment. Exciting shows, fascinating educational exhibits, and plenty of attractions for all ages in a beautifully landscape setting. Your day at SeaWorld of Texas is a day like none other. It's a day filled with discoveries and lasting memories. A chance to peek through a window to the sea to better understand the watery frontier that covers our planet. Stadium, the differences are easy to see. Four species of whales and dolphins from different areas of the globe blend their talents in a unique presentation. Bottlenose dolphins, a longtime favorite in America's four SeaWorld parks, flip and jump their way into your heart. Pacific white sided dolphins, jump and jet, exhibit a high flying style all their own. Beluga whales from icy Arctic waters have a constant smile on their faces, especially after they playfully squirt the splash zone spectators. Streak and Shadow show off their sleek maneuvers as only false killer whales can. Each time you visit the New Friends Stadium at SeaWorld of Texas, it's like a new beginning. That's because the animals are constantly learning. Okay, what we'd like to do next is that Roman ride approximation that we've been working on the past couple weeks. And I think what we'll do is go ahead and do it with uh, Sandy and Dolly, okay. since they look like they've, they're going to go the farthest. And then maybe if they look really good, we'll go ahead and try the ride. Okay, why don't you go ahead and send me Dolly. Over here, Sandy. Okay, go out. Again. That was great. We know what we're doing. Let's go for it. You wanna go for it? You wanna go for it? Okay, they wanna go for it. Okay. They're going for it. All right. Come here. Stay here. Stay right here. You ready for a slap? Slap! SeaWorld trainers spend most of their day in the water with these friendly marine animals, teaching them new maneuvers or playing or just observing the whales and dolphins frolicking with each other. It's not all fun and games, though. Trainers maintain daily contact with members of our animal care and veterinary staffs to ensure that their new friends stay healthy. Hi, hey guys. How are you doing this morning? Good. How are they looking? Looking real good. The respiration's looking real good this morning. Pretty active this morning. Yeah, Ready to go. All the, all the animals get their vitamins and uh, yeah, the their morning morning base. He's pretty clean this morning. Oh, I was just looking to see how much it is we saw in here. Yeah? <laughs> Actually looking real good. When it's showtime, be prepared for some splashy surprises. Speaking of surprises, you'll find plenty of twists and turns at the Sea Lion, Walrus and Otter Stadium, better known as the Spooky Kooky Castle. You'll wind up in the middle of a mystery.
Clyde and Seymour, two wacky California sea lions, are the stars of this hilarious comedy. Uncle Schmedley, a lovable Pacific walrus, makes a belated appearance. And a pesky otter tries to foil attempts to read Uncle Schmedley's will. What is it, Behind me. Like all SeaWorld productions starring marine animals, there's a serious side to this show, too. The trainers who care for these pinnipeds are ever conscious of their needs. They constantly monitor their diet and overall well-being. Many of the animals at our sea lion, walrus, and otter stadium and its adjacent exhibit areas found a home at SeaWorld thanks to a unique SeaWorld rescue program. For example, Take the case of George, a Pacific walrus who often plays Schmedley in spooky, kooky castle. He was found off the coast of Barrow, Alaska when he was just a few weeks old. The orphaned walrus was trying to nurse off the anchor chain of a Coast Guard cutter. We picked him up on July 17th, and he was probably born uh, the first to mid-May. And he's done exceptionally well. He's gained weight rapidly. Uh, he's shown to be very intelligent because he's already working in shows. Uh, his, he's real mild-mannered. He's one of the, the gentlest walruses we've ever worked with. Now trainers work with George at SeaWorld of Texas, his new home. George, uh, he, he enjoys seeing new things and, and oftentimes, uh, you know, in the, the backstage area, he'll find a new prop to play with and uh, that will occupy his time for five or ten minutes and it might slow down a show, but that's all part of it. Um, he's gregarious and inquisitive and anything, it's helped us teach him some of the maneuvers that he's learned on stage. George is just one of hundreds of animals rescued by SeaWorld's animal science staff from coastal areas. Often a permanent disability renders these creatures unable to compete for food in their natural environment. But they have a comfortable and safe new home at SeaWorld. But animals aren't the only stars at SeaWorld of Texas. High-flying humans take the stage at our 12-acre water ski lake. They do a splash back to the 60s in Beach Blanket Ski Party. Beach Blanket Ski Party. Beach Blanket Ski Party. Beach Blanket Ski Party. Disc jockey Sandy Dunes helps settle the rumble between the kids and the squids for control of the beach. While the kids and the squids tear up the lake with their daring stunts, Howard the Coward has his own competition going as he tries to win the heart of Barbara Ann, the most beautiful girl on the beach. And of course, there's a happy ending. In our fast-paced wheel show, the big wheel offers the hand of his daughter, Princess Helen Wheels, to the winner of the Rollin' On tournament. All the champions of the kingdom strut their stuff to impress her. The competition features fancy footwork, amazing acrobatics, and a surprise ending.
After all that excitement, you can slow down the pace a bit with a stroll through Cypress Gardens West. This botanical wonderland is a feast of color year-round. Nestled among native Texas mesquite and live oak trees, fabulous floral displays magically change with the seasons. Meandering streams, Spanish-style fountains, and beautiful donceas grace 16 acres of lush greenery. You can also meet some of the Lone Star State's heroes on the Texas Walk, a very special part of Cypress Gardens West. SeaWorld commissioned six Texas artists to create 18 life-size bronze sculptures, 16 of them on the Texas Walk. Twin figures of Stephen F. Austin, the father of Texas, greet you at our entrance plaza. And a statue of famed ragtime pianist Scott Joplin stands in Joplin Square. Many of the honorees on the Texas Walk made their mark on the nation and the world for that matter like Presidents Eisenhower and Johnson, the late astronaut Ed White, and the First Lady of Sports, Babe Zaharias. Armando Hinojosa, a native of Laredo, Texas, proudly crafted the statue of Admiral Chester Nimitz. He also had a hand in sculpting another impressive work of art, the Double Eagle, located near our shining landmark, the Garden of Flags. The magnificent bronze weighs 3,000 pounds, extends eight feet high, and stands watch over the garden. When they chose me to do the bald eagle, I thought, God, this is great. Especially for a great organization like SeaWorld that um, has always uh, emphasized, um, you know, wildlife. From the double eagle, you can see the entire United States. Our one-acre map of the U.S., that is. You can even walk across the map to the states you've never visited. You can relive the journey of Lewis and Clark or follow the Chisholm Trail. You never knew geography could be so much fun. But that's the way it is at SeaWorld, where fun and learning go hand in hand. <laughs> native Texans. They're not even from this part of the world. But the 300 birds residing in the penguins exhibit at SeaWorld of Texas are right at home. They've got all the comforts of the sub-Antarctic, 30,000 pounds of snow a day, icy winds, frigid seawater, where six species of penguins torpedo through the water. They're much more graceful in the water than on land. Their antics are comical and delightful but the penguins exhibit is really a living laboratory. We're able to continue to enhance our data files from the fledging, from the hatching of the birds that, that came into the country, to monitor them all through the maturity up to breeding age, of uh, their weight gains uh, during, out of breeding season, during the molting season when they have a tendency to go off foods. The adjacent learning hall gives you a glimpse of the pristine Antarctic Peninsula and tells you a lot about the rockhoppers, Gentoos, chinstraps, adelis, and kings that call SeaWorld of Texas their home. Quite the opposite of the penguins' environment is the sharks and the coral reef exhibit. The 300,000-gallon coral reef takes you on a journey to an exotic ocean. Thousands of brightly colored fish dart in and out of the intricate coral formations. Wave action creates the gentle current of tropical seas. Massive skylights above the exhibit illuminate the coral. Denizens of the Deep lurk nearby in a special exhibit. One of the largest of its kind in the world, the shark habitat is dumbbell-shaped to accommodate the swimming patterns of these steely-eyed, yet captivating animals. It is home to sand tiger, brown, and nurse sharks, to name a few. Creating this undersea world was one of SeaWorld's biggest challenges. We can take one piece of coral and we can make a latex mold out of it and from that one piece we can make two to three hundred different pieces of coral and it, it suits our needs. 
to do an artificial reef. One thing we've noticed over time is that the fish prefer this type of habitat. Um, I, I really think that when they come into the, to the coral reef and they look at it, they all of a sudden realize that they're back in the ocean again. Uh, we see them trying to pick at the coral a little bit like they would if they were back in their natural environment. We notice they grow much faster in this type of an exhibit. It wouldn't be SeaWorld without killer whales. Ladies and gentlemen, meet the killer whale of Texas, Shamu. The great heaven Shamu celebration. It's sensational. And it's great, it's true. It's inspiration. Killer whales are among the top predators in the ocean. They're known as fierce hunters. Yet at SeaWorld of Texas, killer whales Shamu, Namu, and Kandu also have a gentler side. I think the first thing that we teach our trainers is to spend a lot of time watching the other trainers develop that relationship. When somebody first starts out here at SeaWorld, they almost job shadow an experienced trainer, so they learn how to look, how to stand, how to touch how to react to what the animals do with them. The most important key, I think, in training any of the animals here at SeaWorld, including our killer whales like Shamu, is really the relationship that the trainer builds with the animal. Um, if a person, if a trainer has a good relationship with them and develops a real rapport, then the animal will do anything for you. a small portion of what SeaWorld trainers do each day involves animal presentations for SeaWorld guests. Our trainers also watch feeding habits closely and observe how the killer whales interact with one another. They exercise the animals, play with the whales, and learn from them. And that's not all. Breeding programs are an important part of the SeaWorld philosophy. Though the science of breeding killer whales is relatively new, SeaWorld is the pioneer in this facet of marine science. The first killer whale ever successfully born and reared at a marine life park was at SeaWorld of Florida in 1985. That was only the beginning. In the summer of 1987, through ongoing scientific tests and observations, SeaWorld animal scientists determined that a SeaWorld of Texas killer whale, Namu, was pregnant. It was estimated that she would give birth in the fall of 1988 after a gestation period of nearly 17 months. As Namu's time drew near, trainers, animal care, and veterinary staff worked together to ensure a smooth delivery. Daily measurements were taken on Namu to chart her rate of growth. You know, it was looking like it had dropped. Now it looks like it's way back up in there again. Yeah, it does. The other thing we ought to do today is pull out all her measurement records to kind of chart out that girth. I think the girth is the best barometer we have. Yeah. In the last two months, Namu was watched day and night. Animal care and training staffs monitored her respiration, food intake, and also noted changes in her behavior. November 26, 1988, Namu went into labor. At 12.10 p.m., Texas's first killer whale was born. The calf, estimated at 300 pounds and six and a half feet long, was named Baby Shamu. Even before she was 24 hours old, she made international headlines as the newest member of the SeaWorld baby boom. Baby Shamu's birth was the third killer whale birth of the year. Calves were born in previous weeks at sister parks in San Diego and Orlando. But the animal sciences staff at SeaWorld of Texas remained cautiously optimistic. The first few hours, days, and months were critical for both mother and calf. Would the baby nurse? Was the mother producing enough milk to feed the calf? 
How would other whales at the stadium react to mom and baby? After the successful birth and delivery of the, ca uh, of the calf, the, all the animals did pair up in the pool and swim together. Uh, the other animal was also a female, and all three animals, including the baby, did get together and swim in a very routine pattern, uh, a very calm and swimming action. What we were interested in seeing was the bonding between the mother and the calf, and also the, the bonding and the successful grouping of the, the, all the animals in the pool. Um, past that, we were interested in seeing the time span that it would take to have successful nursing. Approximately 12 hours after birth, we did notice a strong nursing response in the calf and an acceptance of that response from the mother. Uh, so we did see successful nursing and it did continue for, uh, throughout that same day and did increase over the next few following days. We did have staff members that had been monitoring the animal for a 24-hour basis approximately two months before birth and we continued that vigilance approximately three months after the birth. By three months of age, baby Shamu had tripled her weight to 900 pounds and was even playing with bits of fish offered to her by Namu. We she also began to learn by mimicking her mother in daily presentations of Meet Shamu. Each new day with baby Shamu brings new discoveries about killer whale growth rates, nursing patterns, and behavior. More and more is added to the body of knowledge about these majestic marine mammals. SeaWorld Parks have spent more than 25 years studying marine animals and solving mysteries of the sea. What we have learned, we share. For what is unknown is either feared or neglected. We share with thousands of students in ongoing education programs, with teachers in our living learning centers, with members of the scientific community. Most important of all, we share our knowledge with you in a very special way. A day of laughter and learning at SeaWorld of Texas. Come, experience the joy and wonder of a day like none other. A SeaWorld day. It's yours to treasure over and over again. to free.